Hello and welcome to the 2023 Tour de Rwanda. And it's a special edition this year because the race is counting on the presence of four-time Tour de France winner Chris Froome, who's come to the race early for a charitable visit. It must be quite uh, an exciting time for you this week because it's your first time back racing in Africa for 14 years, I think. It feels, it feels a little bit surreal for me. It's almost as if it's done full circle for me. I mean, I, I started cycling out in Kenya, uh, not too far from here. In Kenya, we didn't have, a, have anything like this. We didn't have any infrastructure like this. So to, to see this here now and, and what it means to uh, the ladies team that we're supporting here and the community in general, Comtrack was, <laughs> was mental. I've never, never actually ridden a Comtrack properly before. Um, it's amazing how you, you can't really pedal. I mean, it's just, you're literally just pumping and you're, it's like doing a thousand squats. By the end of it, I was nailed. In the next 10 years, we're going to see a huge boom in African cycling, and I think we'll see a wave of African cyclists getting onto the, the professional scene. I mean, we've already had a few breaking through here and there, but I think similar to the way South America have seen a, a, a huge number of Colombians on the pro scene, I think in the next decade, we're going to see a lot of Africans coming through as well, hopefully. The race was to get away for stage one from the Kigali Golf Resort and Villas and finish in Rwama Magama. And there was Chris Froome, the four-time winner of the race, getting ready. It was a nice atmosphere. It was excited. Everyone was happy to be there. The race got away with Chris Froome, the guest of honor on the start line there. And there was a really nice atmosphere as they were drummed away. As you can see, here was the, the profile for stage one. Not a particularly difficult start for the race, we don't think. 115 kilometers with 1,500 meters of climbing and some laps on a final circuit around Ramagama. The race organizers only gave it a one-star difficulty, so we would be expecting a sprint at the end of the day. As expected, immediately there were breakaway efforts. Tobias Perry there, the young Briton from the EF Nippo development team, going off the front with James Fouché and Jean Bosco Nusingimana one of the local riders. As you can see, Fouché, he's a big rider with a big long mullet, but behind the peloton were chasing with Quickstep, the young development team, who will probably be riding for Ethan Vernon, the 22-year-old Briton, who's already picked up some World Tour races, wins in his time. At the head of the race, Perry was dropped, and Fouché and Sengimana were working hard, keen to make it to those final laps. Quickstep working hard on the peloton, as, as expected, they kept the gap very nice and, nice and short. The crowds, the crowds of the Tour Rwanda, always out in force, and this year, absolutely no different at all. With 55 kilometers to go, the gap was at two minutes and 10 seconds, and Nusengi Mana was trying to go solo up ahead the road to try and get some points in the mountain classification. He's a local rider. He's 30 years old. He's done the race 12 years in a row. He even won it in 2015, so he's really one of the great fixtures of the race of the last decade. Fouché, meanwhile, was ploughing his way back, but Musengi Mana took those first mountain points of the race. <laughs> meanwhile, behind, Quickstep kept a nice, calm look ahead of the peloton. And you can see there were only 19 and 20 year old guys because they're from the development squad, but they were doing a good job for their 22 year old leader, Ethan Vernon. Fouché came back to the Rwandan and then tried to blow straight back past him. But behind, as usual, as the race got into those final circuits, you can see there the 300 meters to go banner with five laps to go. The pace was steady. They had kept it in control. There were no worries. The gap was under a minute with 31 kilometers ago, so really there was no chance for these two. Fouché himself is a 24-year-old New Zealander. He's the Oceania Continental Champion and rides for Bolton Equities Black Spoke. He's a twice the national champion and he has a huge engine. 
but it wasn't to be his day. With eight kilometers to go, with the race all back together, another young uh, Rwandan attacked, and it was Eric Maniza Bayo, the current national champion. Look at him there, giving it everything. There goes Fouché, out the back, his day done, saving in his energy, maybe for another day. Maniza Bayo was giving it everything on the final climb, but really, he had no chance. And as we let, went back in for one lap to go, quick step were controlling with ease. So could Ethan Vernon repay all of the hard work of his quick step teammates as we head into the final kilometer here? In fact, it's Total Energies who let it out, going for a flyer right into the corner. But as we see the shot from above, there's Ethan Vernon coming down the right hand side, really opening up his sprint. And well, he's got a big gap there, a huge gap. He's more than five bike lengths there. And he takes the first stage of the Tour de Rwanda with ease. A job well done from the quick step team there. I've never ridden with these guys before, so to pull something up like this off with uh, with a team being in the first time, and for some of these guys, first time in the professional uh, race, oh, it's really special. And the boys were really good, uh, and yeah, it was ni nice to race with them. So of course, the winner of the first stage also takes the yellow jersey. There he is at the top, Ethan Vernon of Sudal Quick Step. Stage two also started in Kigali, in the car-free pedestrianized zone. And in a minute, we're gonna hear from one of the greats of African cycling, Daniel tekla I feel good, so I'm really happy with, the, with my boys, and uh, yeah, I was wishing uh, all the best to the left uh, stage. Still early in the race, so the riders were very relaxed on the start line as stage two went underway. Slightly more difficult than stage one, at 132 kilometers with 2,500 meters of climbing, the race would end up in Gizagara, so leaving the capital city of Kigali. Really though, all expectations were that it would be a sprint finish. And immediately there was a solo breakaway, it was Mark Oliver Pritzen from South Africa who'd gone and got a huge gap up front he was riding for the Quebec Continental team in 2021 and probably would have expected to step up to World Tour level until that team folded. He was unattached for 2022, but as you can see, he's got a ride with the EF Nippo development team and is really trying to make his mark. Here he is on the climb up to Camogne, just going to take those, hoover up all of those mountain points to, get him, to try to get himself in the mountains jersey. There was a chasing group behind, but it was always fragmented. Moise Mugisha up there, one of the real hometown favorites, a man who won a stage at the race here last year, and Jean Nipo Bigirimana from the Maesters team, a new team based out of Eritrea. So with the peloton only three minutes behind, it was a decent gap for Jean Mark Britson, but realistically, it's not enough for him being on his own. There's Moise Mugisha sitting up, realizing that he's had no chance today. And again, as you can see, the Sudal Quick Step team on the front, working for their sprinter and stage one winner, Ethan Vernon. Lovely scenery as always in Rwanda. And look at the crowds, absolutely incredible. From start to finish, there were crowds like this at the race. One of the other breakaway riders then gives up Jean Nepo Bigirimana as we see a little bit of a counter attack come behind. We can see a rider from the Rwanda team as well as the team South Africa. With 53 kilometers, Mark Oliver Pritzen plowing his lonely furrow. He's got three minutes, so he's holding the gap, but you can see the effort starting to tell on his face there. And here's a new chaser, Felician Hakizimana, but again, all to no avail. A really impressive ride from Mark andre Pritzen to stay out front for so long. With 28 kilometers to go, Hakizimana actually is bridging up to Pritzen, so you can see he's tired. There he is from the Maystars team, the young Eritrean. But behind, with 26 kilometers to go, the catch is made. Quick step, once again, pulling hard. They know what they want, it's a sprint. 
They've got the man in form. Why wouldn't they be riding? And then, with 16 kilometers to go, a little dangerous group has gone off the front again, including Moise Mugisha and Victor Tilapate, definitely one of the favorites for the race. Interestingly, Quickstep had also put one of their young riders, their climber, William Junior Le Cerf, in the move, maybe to, to take the edge off them having to chase. Over the rolling terrain, unfortunately, this group weren't working well enough together, and with eight kilometers to go, well, the peloton were really pushing hard to, to get back to them. And when to the final kilometre, it was everyone back again. Total Energies again driving it out early, but have they gone too early? Well, leading it out now, Bardiani. But where's Ethan Vernon? Where's the quick step rider? And there goes Anatoly Budiak on the inside, but the yellow jersey's on his wheel. Is he going to get boxed in by Henok Mulubran? Let's see how it plays out in the finale. And here comes Werner right through the middle in the yellow jersey. The Brit is going to take his second win with ease. And behind, you can see Henok Mulubran bang the bars in frustration. He knows he had a chance there to beat the Brit. Obviously, it's always the goal to win. Uh, this one was more difficult, I think. Uh, the course was uh, hard in the final, and again we uh, we had to go on the attack the whole stage because then, uh, no one decides to help. So yeah, we have to attack the whole day, uh, or otherwise the break wins. So yeah, for sure the whole day was uh, pretty tough, but yeah, I'm glad uh, we we got to win. And so Vernon takes the podium flowers again. He should be very happy. That's his third win of the season already. And on GC, he's still on the top with Henok Mullerbrand breathing down his neck. Stage three from Rui to Musanze, and we're really getting into the countryside now. The riders are still in excellent spirits. Uh, it's a really nice start for us, obviously, to win in the jersey as well is nice. Uh, and the crowds are really nice. Hearing uh, everyone shout for the yellow jersey and things on, on the course is also, uh, also really nice to, to, to feel and uh, experience. And away the riders go for stage three, really one of the toughest early tests of the race leaving out of Hui, it's 199 kilometers with 3,300 meters of climbing, five categorized climbs, two of which are category one. The race organizers have given it a three-star difficulty out of four, but really, this was one that the riders were nervous about. And early on, it was familiar faces in the breakaway. Mark Oliver Pritzen, James Fusse, and Jean Bosco Nsingimana. The peloton behind were taking it easy, happy to let those three head up the road. James Fouché pushing hard on the front. As you can see, with 139 kilometers to go, the gap was up to 11 minutes. Look how stunning the views are as we get out into the real country here towards Muzanzi. Of course, it's no surprise that these three same riders are in the breakaway. Clearly, they have their eyes on the jersey classifications for the sprints and the climbs. James Fouché, a bit too much of a ruler to be contesting the mountains climb. They're a little shake of the head. And Mark Oliver Pritzen, well, he can't hold the wheel, the wheel of Nsengi Mana, who really wants to take that mountain jersey off him. You can hear the roar of the crowd seeing their local rider take the points, and it looks like he was wanting to plow on there. Up front, quick step leading the chase, with Israel lending a hand, perhaps Chris Froome feeling good today. Listen to that crowd. So, Unsengi Mana, solo with 40 seconds advantage over the two behind him, and the peloton at 12 minutes. 84 kilometers to go. There seemed to be no real panic, but Vernon was dropped, the yellow jersey, finding that these hills and this many meters of climbing on the stage just too much for him. When Segimana ultimately did decide to wait for the two behind, I think that was a smart move because the trio could then work together to try to hold their gap. So who would work now? Well, Israel quick step with the team on the front. Really, maybe they were trying to set up Chris Froome. But Nsengimane, he goes again on the climbs. He's keen for the points and God, he's got some punch on him. Up Umurenge, 5.3 kilometers at 4.3%. He was gonna take the points again. But again, waiting, waiting for the other two. He's got his points and here they come.
taking him surpri by surprise a little bit there, but back in the bunch and more spectacular vistas as we ride this sort of ridgeway that goes along with mountains either side. A little bit of rain had ap appeared at this time in the race and the gap had fallen dramatically down to only one minute and 40 seconds. The peloton were really, really pushing on hard with Israel still at the front there. And finally, Fouché is showing his enduring time trial engine to leave behind Mark Oliver Pritzen. So he goes solo. Can this Oceania continental champion hold off the peloton? God, you can feel the effort there. But look, look, a break from behind with only two kilometers to go. Victor to Lepart. Oh, it's heartbreak for the Kiwi. And look at the pain on Victor de la Parte's face, but he's caught with one kilometer to go. There's Budiak, Mulubran, and it looks like William Junior Le Cerf. Look at him, he's all over the bike. And into the final sprint, and it looks like Le Cerf is leading it out, and Mulubran's on his wheel, but Mulubran, the Eritrean of Bardiani, he comes around him, he's gonna take the win, his first ever win at the Tour de Rwanda. What a victory for the Eritrean. Finally, after a long time, to win in Rwanda is, uh, I speak true, uh, I dream a lot to win in Rwanda, a long time, but uh, with God, with everything, finally I got it, what I get, uh, a lot of dream for my family, for my fans, for everything, congrats. In a career that so far has been littered with near misses and podiums, he's finally on the top step and he's got the yellow jersey to boot, the young Eritrean. Stage four and we're almost at the halfway point of the race and well, this is actually an area where the gorillas do reside in Rwanda. The race is uh, coming more uh, tough and tough uh, with the coming days and with the team, uh, I'm really trust on the team. Uh, I hope uh, it's gonna be uh, control the race all the day, but in the some tough stage, I can react myself uh, to that uh, breakaway. So the start is given for stage four, leaving out of Muzanze where the race finished the previous day. And another hard one was on the cards. The race organizers given it a three star difficulty, 138 kilometers, so the riders will be pleased to hear that it's 60 kilometers shorter than yesterday, but there's still 2,400 meters of climbing, three of them category one climbs. Well, we pick up the action with 59 kilometers to go. A group of four riders have two minutes and 40 advantage. One of them there, the young Eritrean, Aklilu Arafaina. He's only 18 years old, riding for the Intermarché Development Squad. Could he be the next, well, Binium Gamay, perhaps? Behind chasing was Eric Manizabayo from the Rwanda national team, but would he make the junction up ahead? Before long, though, the group was down to three as the rain fell. Mark Stewart, the 27-year-old Scott from the Bolton Equities Black Spoke team in with the group there. Well, you can see the pace as they hit the downhill there. There's Erdefine at the back, the 18-year-old. He's done incredibly well to even make it into a group this strong. 30 kilometers to go and the gap is down to 40. But as you can see there, three total energies riders have made the gap. And just off the back there, we could see Chris Froome. Total Energies riders were really pushing on. They'd made the bridge across to the two breakaway riders. You can see in, in them amongst them was Thomas Bonnet, the 24-year-old Frenchman, a really talented young stage racer. And as they approached the line, well, it was Total Energies to lose. Quick step, chasing behind, but I think in vain. And with 18 kilometers to go, the gap was at 35 seconds, and Energies were really wanting to just work together. Oh, and it looks like the young Eritrean has finally run out of energy. There, he looks back. His day is done. Mark Stewart bridges up to the two total energies rider. God, he's going to have a difficult fight on his hands to try and beat them. There's Thomas Verche at the front doing the work there for Thomas Bonnet, presumably their choice for the day. With 10 kilometers to go, 
It was only 40 seconds the gap, so definitely bridgeable, but with teams only five riders each and some even fewer, it's very hard to get organized at a race like this. So three kilometers to go and still 35 seconds. You can see Total Energies just pushing hard. Bonnet shaking the cramp out of his legs there. Was he feeling all right? Into the final kilometer, and there goes Bonnet. Thomas Bonnet making that attack, having been set up by his teammate Versha. And Mark Stewart, look at him, trying hard to hold on. But Thomas Bonnet is going to take a win. It'll be his first win of the year, the Frenchman, the 24-year-old. Wow, Total Energy's played that, an absolute treat. And he's going to win with ease. A beautiful coup de grace from the French team. And look at him. He's even got time to enjoy the victory. A fantastic win there for Total Energy. Mark Stewart comes across the line, a disconsolate figure in second, but a great result nonetheless. First year, first victory. It's crazy because I hadn't really aimed to try and win this stage. It was a bit done by, well, that's how it goes, by feeling. We really hit it on the descent. We left like that, three riders, turn around and that was it. So Thomas Bonnet of Total Energy is the surprise leader of the race after that opportunistic move from the team. He's got 20 seconds now ahead of second place Henok Mulubran. Stage five from Brusisi to Rubava and we're past the halfway point here. And guess what? It's the Queen stage. We have a good team to defend the jersey here. We'll see what happens this evening. But we're going for the Tour de Rwanda, and even if I lose it, I'd be happy if a teammate could take it. So the riders are away for stage five, and uh, as I mentioned, the Queen stage, by far the toughest stage of the race. Four star difficulty out of four, 195 kilometers with over 4,000 meters of climbing. I hope you realize how difficult that is. There's six category climbs to get over as the riders make their way all the way to Rubavu. This one is for the tough men. And almost immediately, the yellow jersey had a mechanical, but quickly back on a nice cyclocross style mount there by Thomas Bornet. He didn't seem too unduly worried about that one. And there he is, back into the peloton already. Hopefully he didn't have to waste too much energy there. So at the head of the race, well, there was a big group of 20 riders who'd managed to get away, none of whom were the favorites, but the attacks had been flying all morning. As you can see, more stunning scenery. Really, Rwanda is one of the most beautiful countries in Africa. And, and as you can see, the pace is on really hard as that group only have 35 seconds and they're more than 60 kilometers into the stage. You can see the peloton behind just weren't gonna let them go. There's Total Energy defending the jersey behind with Chris Froome quite well placed at the front there. Well, the, the breakaway was still trying hard at the front and but with 115 kilometers to go, the peloton had basically brought them all back. There's Gil Gelders of the Sudal Quickstep team, the young 19-year-old. He gets the mountain points, sits up, because the peloton are there. And look, there's only 30 of them left. This race had blown to absolute pieces, but with so much still to ride. And then, perhaps in and amongst the chaos, wow, Chris Froome, 90 kilometers to go, a solo attack from the four-time Tour de France winner. It's like shades of 2018 at the Giro d'Italia all over again as he got a lead up to three minutes and 40 seconds. There's James Fouché, the sprint jersey leader on the front chasing down. At 65 kilometers to go, Froome's gap had fallen to two minutes 20 and the rain was falling. There's some drop riders there, including Thomas Bonnet, the yellow jersey. All of the climbing must have just been too difficult for him. And yep, he's sitting up, that's it. His, his uh, tilt for the yellow jersey is over. Back to Froome, 55 kilometers to go, and he was nailing the descent. Look at him go there in the rain, absolutely fearless, the Brit. But absolute drama for Froome, as he has to have a neutral service, trying to, oh, look at the difficulty trying to change that wheel there. What bad luck for Froome. 
And here he is again, still out front on his own, but oh, not again. Oh, with 40k to go, Froome has to change bikes again. And there's the peloton behind. Well, his heroic solo effort ultimately comes to nothing as the peloton breeze right past him. Still, it was great to see him off the front of the race. So with 35 kilometers to go, a little bit of a pause as the peloton look around and look a little, maybe an opportunistic move here from one of the young South Africans. I think that's Callum Ormiston. Yes, that is Callum Ormiston there. He's a 22 year old who rides for the Global Six Continental team usually, but he's representing his nation here. Well, he took a really good move there just as all of the favorites were looking at each other. He's not one of the favorites for the race, so they let him go. 15 kilometers to go now, and you can see Bardiani riding on the front for Henock, but the gap is 35 seconds. It's not bad for Ormiston. And look at him there, tucked down in as aerodynamic a position as he can, trying desperately to hold off the chasing pack behind. With 10 kilometers to go, I mean, gosh, if he were to pull this off, this would be the victory of his career. Behind, oh, it's all fragmented, absolutely fragmented. Riders trying to attack. They're never going to catch him if they ride like this. Six kilometers, and yeah, as we see, the gap is still 30 seconds. Look at the grit on his face. The determination is huge from the young South African. He knows what this race win would mean to him. Into the final kilometer, and well, it looks like he's going to do it. Unbelievably, Callum Ormiston is going to, on the Queen stage of the Tour de Rwanda, upset all of the favourites and take the win solo. Look at the huge crowd cheering him in. And he's even got time to enjoy. He takes one look back and there it is. A huge surprise that. You can see there a few riders making it, but he knows he's done it. What a win by Callum Ormiston. And isn't he pumped up by the victory? Whoa, what a celebration. And there you see in second, Walter Calzone. He's so frustrated by that. It was a massive stage today. I'm just speechless. I can't believe that I stayed away. I've worked really hard and uh, no, I just can't believe it's finally paid off. I'm just really happy, really, really happy. A new yellow jersey wearer. It's William Junior Lesurf, the 20 year old from Sudal Quickstep. He takes over the lead just by two seconds from Anatoly Budjek. Stage six, only three to go. Who do you think the teams or the riders are the ones to look out for? Or I'd say Total Energy, to be honest. They've got two riders, one on third and one on fourth position. I'm sure they're going to attack me. Also, the Ukrainian, he's really strong too. So I'd say those are the ones to look out for. So stage six is underway. We're riding all the way from Rubavu to Gikombi. It's a three-star stage, so another difficult one yet again. The Tour de Rwanda always, well, they call it the land of a thousand hills for a reason. Today, 1,900 meters of climbing, over 157 kilometers. And with 138 kilometers to go, the breakaway had already formed and and as we've seen so far in this race, well, there's a pattern. Breakaways with strong riders do really do have a chance because with such small teams behind for GC, it can be hard to actually chase the race and, and cancel them out. But quick step, we're having a go. They Perhaps they were thinking that, well, protecting the yellow jersey or maybe even Ethan Vernon could get up there. Up front, we can see Moise Mugishu of the Team Rwanda. He's a really popular rider here. He's won a stage and comes second overall two years ago. The group were working really well together at the front, going through and off, just trying to eke out that advantage to the peloton behind, who were chasing hard, but the gap was 2 minutes 15 with 113 kilometers. Perhaps an impromptu food stop there for the peloton. No, nobody taking up the chance. They'll stick to their ice balls. And there's William Junior Surf, the young Belgium in the leader's jersey. 51 kilometers to go, and unfortunately, the local rider Mugishu was dropped. 26 years old, it's just not been his race this year so far. Well, the peloton, well, the gap had gone out. They weren't riding hard enough at the front. Perhaps they've been paying for all that work for Ethan Vernon in the first two days. 
Fouché, who'd made the breakaway yet again, dropped. There's Pritson again, the young South African. He's looking good. Up front, we got a Uskel tail rider, but there's Badilate, joined by Aklilu Arifaini, the 18-year-old Eritrean, but he's dropped again, and Badilate, wow, he's reaching out to go solo on the Tetero climb. 6.3 kilometers at 6.8 average. It's no mean mountain. Well, Arifani's really shown himself to be a super talent in this race. Perhaps he's not quite there yet, but well, at age 18, he has a lot of time on his hands. Here comes the peloton sweeping around the bend, but with Badalati up front with a good, decent advantage, it was going to be difficult to them. Here's Mark Olivier Princeton, who'd taken a few more points for his mountains jersey for classification. There's Uskartel on the front, perhaps Manuel Biscada was looking good for the day. But they were two minutes behind almost, the head of the race, Badilati. And here he is, 16 kilometers to go, the Q36.5 rider. He's a really good stage racer from Switzerland. And he rode for the World Tour for Group Arm FTG last year, so you can see he's got real quality. There goes Arifaina, caught by the peloton, now led by Total Energy. Badilati, well, it's not his first time at the Tour de Rwanda. He's come third at a stage here before in 2019. Would he be able to break the duck today? Into the final kilometer, and it was really looking likely. Unbelievably, at the age of 30, if he wins today's stage, it'll be his first ever pro victory. And here he is, 300 meters to go. He looks back, he knows he's done it. God, he's grinding a big gear. He must be in so much pain, but hey, the pain turns to pleasure as he knows the victory is his. Again, a huge crowd welcome him home. He zips up the jersey to get the sponsors in. It's a victory for Q36.5 for the new team for Doug Ryder. Well, a brilliant win for him there as the remnants of the breakaway come in behind him. In fact, it was a 1-2 for Q36.5 with Walter Calzone taking second. There you can see the two of them embracing. We were behind in a group. We were kind of playing with the peloton. It was a slow, then fast. And then on one of the climbs, on the second climb, in fact, there were some gaps. And I was behind. But I managed to get back to the front. And I got back to them and I thought, well, yeah, OK, I'm the strongest here. I'm going to win. It was a victory of strength alone. I dedicate it to my colleague Marino, who died two years ago. It's for him, this win. William Junior Le Cerf of the Soudal Quick Step Development team there, still on top, the young 20-year-old Belgian, but it's very, very tight, with only 11 seconds between the top eight. Stage seven, the penultimate stage of the race, and definitely one to look up to, because it finishes at Mont Kigali. Ah, it'll be difficult for Badalati to win the race. I, I think we're going to put everything behind Walter Calzone. At the end, well, the winner's going to be, there's going to be tiny gaps between them. Very small gaps. And the flags drop for stage seven. The riders will definitely be feeling the effort of the last six days in the legs. And unsurprisingly, it's another difficult stage. 115 kilometers, so not that long at all, but 2,100 meters of climbing. And interestingly, they're going up the Mont Kigali, which is a very difficult climb, twice at the end. So once to check it out, and again to finish. Well, we pick up the action with 20 kilometers to go and the racing had been full gas from the start. Two riders, two local riders from the front, John Bosco and Sengimana, that man again from Rwanda, and Felician Hakizimana from Eritrea. They were the ones that would be tackling the Mont Kigali climb at the head of the race from the start. Only 1.7 kilometers long, but at 8.6%, it's really steep. And look at the crowds cheering the local riders on. There's Hakizimana making a break for the top. God, he's really putting in a big effort. I don't know if it's that, and hold on a minute. Is he, does he think he's winning the race? Perhaps he hasn't looked at the route book. I think he thinks he's won the stage here. Yeah, he's put it, oh dearie me, how embarrassing. He might get a few laughs at his expense. I think he, has he realized? Yeah, I think he's realized, oh no, he's got to keep going. And here comes Unsengimana just behind. He's paced his effort because, well, he knew they had another climb still to go. 
onto the descent and really it's just a very rapid descent right back down to the bottom of the climb before they hit it again. There isn't a huge gap to the chasing group behind though, here they are getting their last feeds from the Swaniers. Will the win play out between these two or from the chasing group behind or will the peloton chase them up and Nsegi Mana, he fires straight past Akizi Mana. Here comes the peloton behind, there's about 30 riders in there led by Quickstep once again with, you can see, William Jr. De Surf in second wheel. Oh, and here comes a Bardiani rider. And he's gone straight over the top of the two who are in front. I think is that looks like Manuel Tarozzi. Yep, it's Manuel Tarozzi. He's making a break for it solo before they've even hit the bottom of the climb. An excellent move. There's one of the Uskel Tell riders chasing behind. 10 kilometers to go now and Tarozzi's out front. He's really been bold with this move. Most would have waited, waited in the group and hit it on the final climb, but perhaps he's not quite a strong a climber, so he knows this is his only chance to hold them off. He's got only 10 seconds. The peloton are two minutes 10 behind, so they're not going to get there. Here's the chasing group being led by one of the young Israelis on the Israel Quick Step team. And onto the cobble part of the climb, four kilometers to go. Oh, and the, group, the gap's gone out to 35 seconds. What a great ride from Tarotzi. He's actually riding up the infamous Moor de Kigali, the cobbled climb that has gone viral on the internet each time the race goes over here. Because look at the crowds. They're, God, they're maybe even 10 deep there. Here he is, the Italian. This would be, without question, the victory of his young career. He's only 25, riding for Green Project Bardiani. They've already had a stage win with Henok Mulubran. Can they get another? Well, the chasing group's down to three, but there looks like a pretty big gap up front there, and it, we're down to the last kilometer here. In fact, it's only 200 meters to go. There's Mark Stewart again. He's up in the mix. He's chasing, but I think it's all in vain. As Manuel Tarozzi, he's going to do it. He's going to win on Monkey Gali. It's going to be the biggest win of his life. Look at the joy in his face. He's weaving over the road. He can barely keep it upright. What a win. And the second of the race for Green Project Bardiani. There's Mark Stewart coming over the line for second. And Une Iroba of Uskal turned third. There he is leaning on the fence. What a win for Bardiani. It's my, it's my first uh, win uh, for uh, the pro, uh, pro, uh, pro cycling. Uh, he's very, very, very happy. And uh, he's happy for Enoch uh, and uh, take yellow jersey. This is the race. We cannot say nothing uh, until finish. But today is today. What I do today is I'm happy. I see tomorrow how it's going. And the team win stage. Incredible first and third. For the team is a really, really big day. And a new yellow jersey once again. And it's Henok Mullerbrand. He's back in yellow. He put in a huge performance behind there in the climb to take the yellow jersey. But look how close it is. Zero seconds between him and Walter Calzani. And so here we go. The final stage of the Tour de Randa. And it could not be better set. Today is the most important day even for my life. It's uh, really good if I win Tour Rwanda. So I wish uh, the same leg like yesterday. So the final race route upon which we will see the winner of the Tour de Rwanda decided. And it's an absolute roller coaster of a route. Three laps of a 25 kilometer circuit around the city with three passages of the Mur de Kigali before a hugely steep final climb. We can pick up the action with a little under halfway through the stage and it's been full speed from the off. The race has blown to pieces. There's a small breakaway group, but as the, as the race hits the second time up the Moor de Kigali, well, we have Dawit Yamain making a little break for it, showing his strong legs. He's been strong all week. Maybe it's too early to go. Maybe he's just showing his strength. And look at the weaving over the road there at the bottom of the screen. It's an absolute fantastic spectacle, this climb. In second wheel there, one of the young quick step development riders. And behind, well, that looks like Joseph Blackmore, the young teenager from Great Britain. 
And where's the yellow jersey? There he is, Henrik Mullerbrand, yet yeah, comfortably placed, doing well at the front of the race. As you can see, this is mano a mano stuff. Yemain keeps pushing on with the race slightly sprinted behind, but I expect them all to come back together. And here's the peloton behind, but really, this is drop riders. These are riders with nothing to race for. They just want to make it through the race, and you can see how much slower they're going over the climb. 18 kilometers to go now, and there's about 15 riders in this front group. You can see Henok Mullerbrand in third wheel. Total energies are really up for this, though. You can see that they were really pushing on the front. On to the Mura Kigali for the last time. And, well, who's going to show their strength here? Look at the cobbles from that camera angle. And we can see the fantastic crowds, as always. Oh, and look at Henok. 14 kilometers to go. He's showing how good his legs are. He is looking in excellent form. And the first man over the top of the Mura Kigali there. Yep, yeah, there he is, leading them over. He's just showing the others that he's not meant to be messed with today. As we approach the finale, really weird, it's a nail-biting stuff. Five kilometers to go, and Dawit Yamane goes again. He's not in the GC battle, so he's only in it for the stage, so he has a little bit of room to play with. It's a great move from the Eritrean there. Behind, 10 riders, that's it. Who will win the race? Will it be Henok Mullerbran, or will it be one of the riders just a couple of seconds behind him, like William Junior Le Cerf? Here goes Jumaine, he's really pushing hard, gritting his teeth as he just takes that final roundabout before they hit a hugely long straight uphill road. Le Cerf, Mullerbrand, Blackmore, they look like the three strongest riders in the race here. There you can see Jumaine, he's going to get caught. It looks like it's going to be between William Junior Le Cerf, one of the Total Energy riders, or Joseph Blackmore, the young Briton. And yet, your main gets passed. God, this is going down to the wire. There's no separation at all. And Budiak's coming back here, the Ukrainian. God, he really is strong. Oh, it seems like they're looking at each other. This is ramps of up to 14% here. Your main's back in it as they look at each other. But, oh, and that's Le Cerf's got a mechanical. What a time to get it. The young Belgian, this could be race over for him at the last possible moment in the race. Oh, that's terrible luck for the Belgian, who was only two seconds behind on GC. He's back on the bike, but can he make it up? There must be only 500 meters to go. Blackmore on the front there, the young GB rider. Henrik Mullerbrand in second wheel. All he needs to do is finish in this bunch, and he's won the Tour de Rwanda. Look at Le Cerf behind, desperately trying to get back onto the group. Your main's gritting on that. Oh, Le Cerf's there. What an amazing effort. He had a mechanical, and he's got back onto this group. What a performance. But he's probably spent too much energy, and it's going to be too late for him to get those two extra seconds. God, well, this seems like it's Mullerbrand's race to lose. And there he goes, the Eritrean, the 23-year-old. He launches the sprint. Joseph Blackmore just behind him in second. But look at the crowd. They know he's got it. They know that Henok Mullerbrand is going to win the final stage and the overall of the Tour de Rwanda. What a fantastic victory for Eritrea. An African rider wins the Tour de Rwanda 2023. What a fantastic win. And look at the crowd. It's really an amazing race for me. It's the best of my life, yes, because I never uh, did like this uh, tour in my life. But uh, 2023 is for me is an uh, incredible year. It starts like an uh, amazing year and uh, I hope continue like this all the season. Well, a wonderful, fitting winner of the Tour de Rwanda, celebrated there by President Kagame. And as you can see, he won it by zero seconds, purely on placings overall throughout the race. Calzone will be very, very disappointed by that. There's Mark Oliver Pritz in the South African, best climber of the race. He was off the front several times, very fitting winner of that jersey. Similarly, James Fouché, the New Zealander, who took the sprints competition. Walter Calzone, the consolation prize of the best young rider. Well, he's only 20 years old, he's got time in the future. And that's it from the Tour de Rwanda. A fantastic, very popular winner, Henok Mullerbrand. The Tour de Rwanda 2023 is yours.